welcome back. Welcome back to the Sunday talk show here on the Arise News Channel. With me today, I have Professor Bola Kintenua, Director General, Bolitak Center for International Diplomacy and Strategy Studies. Professor David Awurawa, Professor of International Relations and Strategy Studies also at the University of Lagos. And Yemi Adamoleku, Executive Director in Office Enough. Now to our first uh, topic of the day. A bill seeking to mandate Nigerian trained medical and dental practitioners to practice for a minimum of five years in the country before being granted a full license. As passed the second reading in the House of Representatives, the bill, which was sponsored by an all progressive Congress lawmaker from Lagos, Ganiyu Johnson, seeks to amend the Men Medical and Dental Practitioners Act of 2004 to address the brain drain in the Nigerian health sector. If passed into law, medical and dental practitioners trained in the country will have to practice for at least five years before they are granted a full license. There have been concerns in recent times over the relocation of Nigerian healthcare workers to foreign countries. In August 2022, the Nigerian Medical Association came out with a position that a total collapse of the country's total sec health sector was a possibility if, Nigeria, if urgent steps were not taken to address the brain drain. Meanwhile, the Nigerian Medical Association has expressed displeasure over that bill, which seeks to mandate medical and dental practitioners to practice for five years back home here in Nigeria before relocating abroad. The bill, which also says health workers must work for five years before getting full license, passed the second reading, as I said earlier, in the House of Representatives last Thursday. The sponsor of the bill, Ghanaian Johnson, or Progressive Congress lawmaker from Lagos, says it's only fair for medical doctors who enjoy taxpayer subsidies on their training to give back to society before taking their practice elsewhere. NMA National President Uchi Ojima has however dismissed the bill and said it will not see the light of day. Still on that story, the Nigerian Medical Students Association has opposed the bill being sponsored in the House of Representatives, ostensibly to stem the exodus of medical and dental practitioners to foreign jurisdictions in search of better working conditions. Reacting to the proposed legislation, the Medical Students Association said it is some pretortic, ill-timed, and a breach of the fundamental human rights of doctors, as enshrined in the 1999 Constitution of Nigeria as amended. The association said the bill will end up enslaving trained doctors and paralyzing the health sector. We'll now spend some time focusing on what exactly this bill intends to achieve, at what cost, and why the lawmakers are not considering the fundamental issues at the root of the brain drain in the health sector. Emmanuel Ogene Ego is a member of the All Progressive Congress who represents the people of Amuwad of a federal constituency of Lagos in the House of Representatives. He joins us now. Honorable Ego, thank you very much for joining us. <laughs> I'm honored to be here, but I'm a member of PDP, not APC. Thank you. Oh, you are in the AP, uh, PDP. Okay. My, my producer yes, got... Yes, yes. I've been in the house... Okay. Uh, my producer PDP. got that I've wrong. been in the house uh, since 2015 under PDP. Okay. Okay. No problem. My, my, my producer Thank got you. that wrong. For okay. now, yeah. These people, sometimes, they get that it is, wrong. That is all right. Yeah. yeah. It's okay. So, you are PDP. Yeah. Yeah. But you had, yes, please. You had uh, the introduction. I called you earlier. I was told you were in church and all of that. Yeah. So happy Easter. Yeah. It's good to have yeah. you here. And yeah. it's good Thank to, you very much. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. I'm, Quickly. I'm honored to be here. Yes. You were one of the persons who contributed to the debate about uh, this yes. medical 
bill, uh, bond, as they call it. Yes. Some, some people say bondage. Do you think that people who train as doctors in Nigeria should be kept uh, in that, under that bond for five years, even when it's not the Nigerian yeah. government paying for them, even when they have not received any bus trade? Your take on this matter. Yeah. yeah. Well, first of all, I was in the house when the issue was brought up for second reading. And uh, sometimes in the house, so many people can raise their hand, they want to speak on an issue. And the speaker may not be able to call everybody. Um, unfortunately, I was one of those who raised my hand continuously. And uh, after calling a lot of people to speak, in, in, they spoke in the favor, uh, they couldn't call on me to speak. But I have a strong feeling, and I told my colleagues that this bill is not a good bill for the country. It's not a good bill for uh, the medical association, and it will not help us in any way. And uh, my reasons as follows. One, the bill is discriminatory because there are a lot of students in Nigeria who go to private university. So what will happen if somebody finishes from private university as a medical practitioner or a dentist, and then some other people go to public university? Then you will withhold the certificate of those who went to public university and allow those who went to public university, private university to go. That's one. Secondly, the way the federal government has helped uh, the, the medical profession it's not very clear because I know unless you're on scholarship, all students pay for medical fees. So for us to say, oh, Nigeria trained them for free, I don't agree with it. Secondly, in Nigeria here, a lot of students have free from university. They can't even go for housemanship. For two, three years, they are looking for university, I mean, a tissue hospital to go for housemanship, they cannot go. My opinion is that the government should try to expand facilities for housemanship so that people don't graduate as medical doctors and they sit at home waiting for uh, you know a chance to go for housemanship. I think that's more important than this be. Fourthly, if any government, for instance, any of the developed countries like Britain, America, if they agree to take in our fresh medical graduates to train them for us, I think we should be happy. You know, because when they go abroad, they will now be more used to newer methods of treating people. They be used to uh, latest medical equipment. And after some years, they will rise high. And I can tell you, most of them, if we have more than half of them, will come back to Nigeria. When they come back, they come back with advanced knowledge, and that will help us. An example is India. In the 50s and 70s, a lot of Indian doctors 70s and 60s, who went to Britain after training, you know, they, re they remained there. But coming to the late 80s, they started going back to India. And they now came with a lot of medical knowledge. And today, even from England, people go to India for treatment because the, it's the same standard they will receive in India that they will receive in uh, Britain. And in fact, sometimes, it may be the doctor was attending to them in Britain that have not gone back to India. And that doctor will treat them and the fee in India will be lower. Today, all Nigerians are rushing to India for medical treatment. Most of those people are people who went to Britain, went to America, and they are not back. So it helps us in technological technology transfer, medical technology transfer, for us to allow them to go there. So it is in our own interest. It is the interest of Nigeria to let them go there. And don't, don't underplay the fact that when they go there, they are going to earn good money and they'll be sending money home. Diaspora money they send to Nigeria is one of the ways that we use it to stabilize our dollar. And it helps our central bank and it helps our banks economically. So if there's an area that we are so good and the world recognizes us, and the developed countries agree our export as soon as they finish school. Of course, let them go. I can tell you that when you share the, 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 on the, on the balance of scale, it's a plus for Nigeria. So, so many medical doctors outside, they, they don't have jobs. They don't have. Some of them are working in private medical, uh, small clinic who cannot pay them. They are underused, underutilized. And some of them, the area they qualify in, 
they don't have equipment to do it. This bomb, uh, this is so. If they are going abroad, it, it's good for us. It's like recently the British government opened uh, an avenue for Nigerian teachers to go to Britain. You know, it would be a patriotic for somebody to say, hey, teacher, don't go. We need the teachers here. Whereas you cannot pay these teachers. A lot of them will free for teacher university. You don't have job for them. Even when they are working, the salary is so low. When dollar is devalued, you don't index the salary. You can see somebody is earning the same rate of uh, earning in the last 10 years. Whereas 10 years ago, a dollar was just about 200 naira to a dollar. But right now, it's about 700 naira. Plus, so in other words, teacher or the doctor, they are any far, far, far lower than what they are to earn. And when this job satisfaction is not there, they don't put their best. I'm not sure that there is any doctor, any person who says, oh, I want to apply medical doctor and they don't have what to apply in Nigeria. Instead, the doctors are more. So let's continue to produce them if developed countries are satisfied with them. In fact, in any profession. If the broke country want our lawyers, they want they want our honorable ideas. Yes, yes. Yeah, if you are with me. So that is one of the major arguments being pushed. Yeah, is that if people train as doctors in Nigeria and they are kept here for five years at least, Nigerians will be able to benefit from their training at a time when many doctors are just going abroad and are the whole objective is to check brain drain and to keep our own people at home whether they've been treated uh, they've been uh, trained by government or not what do you say to that yeah yeah what i say to that is that it's a very selfish argument you just keep people because you want to keep them here yes we have more than enough doctors who are on the ground if anybody is worried about brain drain there are so many doctors here who can say their brains are being wasted in nigeria they be trained, there are no jobs for them. So they remain docile, and at the end of the day, all the land, you know, will become obsolete. We have more than enough doctors to fill our teaching hospitals, our general hospitals, and even the private hospitals. We have more than enough doctors. And good enough, we have quality people training them in Nigeria. So if foreign companies see the beauty, if they see that our standards are very high medically, and they say they want to take them, train them further, give them the technology, pay their good salary. They are helping Nigeria. Don't forget that for every Nigerian medical doctor that goes abroad, the money he will sell home to either his parents, his wife, his children, the money we sell home will be more than the salary of about four doctors who are in Nigeria here. So at the end of the day, it's not a brain drain. Rather, we are gaining from it. We must look at it very carefully. Look at India, for instance. If you go to Bangalore, they have trained so many people on computer you know, experts. And the American uh, uh, Silicon Valley, they go there to recruit them. India have not said, oh, don't take our, uh, our, uh, 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 our computer expert that we've trained. When they go there, after some years, they come back to establish in India. They bring money back to India. They bring technology back to India. If you look at Forbes' uh, 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 100 biggest companies, the major 10 of them, Indians are heading them now in the US. Those are people who are trained in India and taken there. And they are bringing the technology. It's earning India a lot of money. So we must look at it from that angle. Instead of just keeping them here in Nigeria, they are not doing any work. You say you train them, it's brain drain, and you don't need them. And at the end of the day, those who are requiring their service who have money to pay, they go to India for, for, for treatment. They are not even patronizing them. And when you people patronize them, they don't have the technology they know how. They don't know the, the latest uh, medical equipment, and not even in Nigeria. And people are not bringing resources to do it. And government is not doing anything about it. So keeping them here, we are just punishing them, and the country is losing by okay. saying medical doctors should not go abroad. Okay. If, if for every medical doctor that goes abroad, Nigeria is getting like three other medical doctors, yes. Okay. Thank you. Honorable Ego, I understand the so point. That is, yeah, my feeling, I, yeah. I understand yeah. the point you are making. Yeah. A similar point has been made by uh, yeah. Senator Ibrahim Oluri Egbe, uh, representing uh, Kwara Central, okay. with regard to this big issue okay. about brain drain. But how do you think we can yes. address this issue of brain drain? Because we have many of our middle class, upper class people, in spite of all of these debates going abroad to seek 
medical care. Yeah. And the argument is that, oh, yeah. perhaps the environment at home is not good enough. You have been in the uh, National Assembly. Uh, Uluri Egbe, your colleague, he has been there. For eight years, yes. Yeah, so what have you guys done? Yeah to make sure that uh, people don't have to travel abroad to yeah. go and cure a headache and yeah. uh, even toothache. That is it. All of you go abroad uh, uh, just for toothache look, reasons. Look, yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if you look at Nigeria medical uh, situation, it's very pathetic. In the early 60s, even the royal family in Saudi Arabia, you used to come to the University of Ibadan Medical uh, 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 Tissue Hospital for treatment. but. Those are good days. Today, our people are rushing here for treatment. What is the reason? There have been a total neglect of the medical area. You know, at the stage, it was agreed that 16% of the budget should be put on medical, DC. Uh, is it 20% for education? But the, the government is not obeying it. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm part of government. But we are not obeying it with the result that we have dilapidated infrastructure in the country. And I think that it's only the private sector that will be able to help Nigeria. This issue of brain drain is, 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 is a farce, it's a horse. It's not here. Because rather than brain drain, it is here, keeping the people here, here we are draining their brain. But if they go abroad, they get more knowledge. And I can assure you, majority of them will come back. If you look at some of our friends who traveled uh, abroad some years ago, some of them are coming back, even in the computer area. You know, banks are recruiting them to come back and they are paid there heavily. And I can assure you that in Nigeria here, as private hospitals or foreign hospitals are established here, they are recruiting Nigerians from abroad. And they are paying them heavily. But if you have led those people here, there will be just some very hungry doctors who don't even understand the latest uh, DC. Now, if we are lucky enough to train people that are accepted internationally, we should thank God. And those people after trading them, if they go abroad to get further knowledge, we should be happy. Because those people, like I said, they will be sending dollar back, that is, you know, through the diaspora money that helped to stabilize our money. Because all we get is money from oil. We hardly export anything. Okay. So Honorable. if we are exporting knowledge, uh, yes. Honorable Ego. I'm, I'm hearing you. Brain drain, so, dream, yes. brain drain has not helped anybody. So, at the turn of the uh, century, yes. Ireland became the provider of talent for the United States. Many of them went on there, they created dynasties, they created. What do you think we should do in Nigeria, in, in specific terms, to check brain drain? Yeah. Instead of saying no, it's, people it's have the freedom the of instead of saying people Hello? have the freedom of movement, we are in a globalized world, they can go where they like. Yeah. I, I can tell you that, that I still stand by that. If the country starts to invest in the medical area, look, it will be there, it will show. No doctor will want to go away. And Nigerians themselves will not want to go to India for treatment because they can see that federal government has invested in it. But when there are no investment in the medical area, nothing could be done. What we need to do is to encourage the private sector to invest more in it. In uh, Ikoi, what is it? I mean, uh, uh, Ikoi, Ikejajiari, and Leki, there are some big hospitals that have just come up there now, you know, that have the same standard with hospitals in India and other things. And most of them are hiring Nigeria from abroad. If Nigerians had not gone abroad to get that knowledge, they would not be bringing expatriates. And those expatriates will earn money here, they will take it home. But now they are not bringing Nigeria to get more knowledge. My opinion is that. The Nigerians who are qualified here, who are going there abroad, they are going there in forgeries of getting more knowledge. And when they get that knowledge, they will come, it will not be all of them that will come back home. But they will do good for us. They will send money to their parents, to their wife, to their relations, to their friends, to their brothers. That money they are sending is a lot. It helps us to, to uh, it helps Nigeria economy to get better because the dollar is weakening every day. We should look at it as a positive sign, as a positive sign. If these people are medical doctors who have gone there, come back with all the knowledge, and then they run back, then we say, oh, something is wrong. But these people are freshly trained here. They don't have any knowledge. Nobody wants to go to them for, for treatment. 
Instead, we prefer to go to India, we go to Turkey, we go to Dubai, we go to Saudi Arabia for treatment. And then you say they should remain here. If they continue to remain here, then our Nigerian people, those who are born in Nigeria, will continue to go abroad forever. It will not be reversed. But if the young Nigerian daughters can go abroad, after 10, 12, 15 years, some of them, they begin to come back in droves with that knowledge to set up here. Maybe by the time some Nigerians want to go abroad, they'll say, ah, even the Nigerian who was treating you abroad is back in Nigeria. They'll say, okay, let me stay in Nigeria. Let's look at the CV of the doctors. Look at what they have been doing and that kind of thing. So sometimes we just, we look at the brain drain as, as uh, uh, the negative part of it. It's actually not a brain drain. It's when you have trained somebody and the person is so good and the leaves that you're talking about brain drain. These are young doctors who have qualified, who are looking for a place to have experience, a place to gain further knowledge. And that place is not available in the country. Do we hold them so that they remain here and they, they, they remain dormant and become illiterate again in their, in their choosing profession because we need them? No. It's like in the area of computer science, you know, and the information technology. If we train anyway, people now, anyway. and American companies, German companies, even Chinese companies recruit them, we should be happy. Because as they recruit them, they will get knowledge there, they will earn good money, they'll be sending money back home. After some time, they will come back with money and resources to establish in Nigeria. And then we can say, now, we are developing. Anyway, but to keep everybody here, anyway, I think we are not doing the country any good. Anyway, uh, Honorable Emmanuel Ogene Ego, I get your arguments. Just to remind you that the Minister yes. of Labor and Employment, Dr. Chris Nkike, once told Nigerians last year that, look, we have more than enough doctors anyway, and anybody that wants to go okay, can that's go. Good. Okay? Yeah. Uh, so, so you yeah. you agree with that? Anybody can go. We have more than no, enough. I think the way he said it, I agree with him, but he said it in a rather arrogant manner. That's what I don't want, because it's the duty of the country to provide the right atmosphere for the doctors to be able to work here. Now that we have failed in it, if we are saying they should go, we should not say it in an arrogant manner. You know, if you have a good opening abroad where they can gain more experience, earn more money, gain more knowledge. Of course, let's encourage them to go. But not to say, oh, any Nigeria we are trained, we have more than enough doctor, we can go. But that the Honorable Minister said, we have enough trained doctors here, shows you that we have a lot of doctors who are just on the ground here. In those days where we finish secondary school, but then we finish university, they are recruiting you in university. There's a job. In those days, we just buy daily times and later guide you and then we apply for a job, and we get jobs. But these days, to get a job, you have to know somebody. Even medical. I know how many doctors I've had to write later to various teaching hospitals, you know, for them to even do housemanship, some of them to work there because of the area they did see. No jobs. So if such a medical doctor has an opportunity to go abroad, earn more money, uh, uh, gain more knowledge there, gain more technology in the area of medicine, and then you say you should not go, that's a wicked, a wicked country that will do that. So my opinion is that the country have not done enough to keep them here. A time will come when Nigeria will do enough. When a lot of Nigeria would have trained abroad, they've come here with their medical equipment, with their husband, their knowledge. And then we have people from Saudi Arabia, other part of the country, coming to Nigeria again for treatment. By the time we get to that level, Nobody will tell people not to go abroad because they will earn good money and they have gained the knowledge. But for us to just say, let's keep them here, you are suffering there, you know they have nothing to do, before we have medical doctors be committing suicide, I don't think it's good for the country. Uh, okay. Honorable Echo, well, okay, neoliberalism, yes. freedom of movement, people can go where they can get best yes. value uh, yeah. for their talent. I understand all of that. Okay. But let's move beyond that. And they will that. come back. They will come back. A lot of them, not all. Okay. But some of them will come back to help the country. Okay, let's That's what we should know. Let's move beyond that. You are Emmanuel Ogene okay. Ego, a non Lagosian representing yes. a new world of thing, uh, federal constituency in Lagos. In the last general election <laughs> yes. in Lagos yes. State. I'm a Lagosian. Yes. Yeah. Ethnicity was a big issue. Yeah. So I would like to ask you a standard yes. question. How market? How did you respond? Well, how did you feel well, about how non Lagosians yeah. were treated in that uh, election? I'd like to have your viewpoint yeah. before well, we I, move on. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think that it was a mistake for people to think that the last election was based on ethnicity. It was certainly not. It was a case of a lot of young people from all tribes who feel that the old politicians, especially in PDP and APC, and other parties have failed the country, and they want to try a new thing. Unfortunately, it affected the established uh, people in Lagos, you know, who believe that those who seem to benefit from the new thinking may not be from their ethnic uh, uh, tribe. But the tension was not on ethnicity. Look at Lagos, for instance. If you look at some areas where the Labour Party won, uh, Shomolu, uh, Alimosho, a host of the areas, you find out that these areas have majority Yorubas. So the Yorubas too know that in, once there's lights out, nobody can see well in the darkness. When there's hunger, both Igbos, Yorubas, outsiders, they feel it. So people voted for somebody they think, a party they think can do better for the country. And it's unfortunate people are looking at this at this city. This is my, I, 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 uh, I won the election first in 2015. In the 8th assembly, I was, I represented Lagos State. In the 9th assembly, I represented Lagos State. But before then, I had won the election as a councillor under Badagri local government in 1987. And I've been a supervising councillor in a young local government. So I know what, you know, this city is. Lagos State is a good state. The people are hospitable. They are very friendly. You know, they don't really care where you come from. But because the stakes this time are so high, you're talking about the governorship, which is involved uh, an annual budget of uh, uh, over a, a close to a trillion naira. And there are people with vested interest who want to defend it. So they bring in all sorts of stories to try to create the confusion. You know, which of course is politics. But generally, I don't think that uh, people in Lagos are be bad. I call myself a Lagosian. I may not be an indigenous Awori person, but where I represent is an Awori land. And they are friendly with me. They've never really been angry with me. A lot of them vote for me. But this last election, the way they try to bring ethnicity is because some people saw that a big apple may be lost. What do we do? Let's bring in different, different stories to ensure that this big apple, who is the state government, is not lost. But, okay. I, but I can trust Lagos State. I trust the governor that after this, they will calm down and people should not panic. I don't think that the ethnicity issue will get worse. As people go to court, let the court handle it, whatever the court decides, up to the Supreme Court, let's take it as a decision. Of course, under four years, there will be another election. Okay, so Honorable Emmanuel Ogene Egor, you are saying invariably that you have no issue, yes. that you lost to the Labour candidate, yes. uh, Labour Party candidate, yes. in the House of Reps election, yes. in the Amu Ward of Inferra Constitution. Yes, I did. Okay. Yes. Thank you yes. very much. Thank you and very yes, much. Yes, I did. And, and, and I made my, my mind I would not go to court, you know, because twice I've won election in the House of uh, I mean to. Uh, uh, to the House of Rep, which is a record in Lagos State. No non DG have ever won the election twice to the House of Rep in Lagos. So I've created a record. And nobody took me to court. So why should I take any other person to court? And besides that, I knew that the wave of labor, especially my constituency, it was so strong that even if I had 10 billion naira to give out, I would still not win the election. It is the time of labor, especially in my constituency. I don't know for other areas, but my constituency having the biggest uh, uh, markets in Lagos is an area where the, the, the obedient movement was so strong that there was no way to stop the move. So I'm happy for them. I'm a PDP. I remain a PDP. And I think that those who won should, should, should uh, embrace those who lost, those who lost should congratulate those who won, as I've done in my case. And then, of course, we live to fight another four years. Okay, that is so my that, that, that means you have no plans to leave the PDP, you have no plans to leave Lagos because of the ethnic tension that no, we have no, no, witnessed. No, no, no. If, an, if anybody says you want to leave Lagos because of ethnicity, I'll be shocked. Lagos will be so welcoming. If you take statistics of houses by non DG, like in my constituency, you will see they are overwhelmingly non DG. Go to the Lekki area, overwhelmingly non DG. And non DG are prospering in Lagos, even more than the state where they come from. 
So why would you want to leave such a place? Now, what has happened now is a temporary thing. There was a big battle. And this battle is on the issue of who controls Lagos. And not just who controls, but who controls a trillion naira budget, which is the highest in the country, which is up to the budget by five states put together. It's a big battle, politically and financially. And a lot of people have been benefiting so that the, the, the Godi Guza is, is slipping out of their hand. And they are fighting for their life. And I can understand them, you know. But now that the battle is over, they are still fear because of the court cases. Once the court cases are resolved, I can assure you it's all over. It did not happen only in Lagos. What about Imo State? In Imo State too, you see that uh, the battle there was tough. And those people thought they would vote for. They didn't vote for them, you know. I hope Zodima won the place of our in the House of Assembly election, you know. And in other areas, even in, in Anabra and other states, there were still injuries, Achilles, and that kind of thing. But does that mean that, oh, anybody who's living in Imo State or Abia State will say, oh, I want to live there because there's Achilles and that kind of thing. Now, I don't support what happened. In my constituency, some people were shot. And I'm very happy about that. This is the first time it has happened. But we know that it is a big struggle for that big apple that cost it. As it is now, you know, I know that no harm will be done to anybody. And personally, I will advise all our people in Lagos, all non indigenous in Lagos, to remain calm, stay and do your business. No harm will come to them, I can assure you. I have tried to interact with the APC government and to tell them that those, those injuries were bad enough. And some of them are very apologetic that it would happen again. So uh, let us continue our business in Lagos. There's profit doing business in Lagos because Lagos is a friendly place. It's a welcoming place. And, you know, let us help to develop Lagos. And it will be good for all of us. But what I must say is that as time goes on, as time goes on, more people will realize that you can do election and win anywhere you are. Look at, look at uh, England, for instance. The mayor of London is uh, of Arab descent. He's not a British person. The prime minister of England is an Indian. But this could not have happened, let's say, 50, 60, 70, 80 years ago. Because the mind was not as open as that. So it is with Lagos. I know that in future, in the, not now, in the future, Lagosians will accept non indigenous to be in any position. By then, there would have been a generation of non indigenous in Lagos. Most of them would not call Lagos their home. There are people who were born in Fensac, who are now adults. They now have children in Fensac. In the next couple of years, people will have great-grandchildren who were born in Fensac. Their children were born in Fensac. Their grandchildren were born and great-grandchildren. And when that happens, you cannot say such a person does not have a right to political uh, uh, to contest for a political position. Honorable again. Emmanuel Lagos. And then if you look at all those who want for labor, just a moment, who want for labor, who want for labor in Lagos, a lot of them are Yorubas. In my constituency, they are majority Yorubas. So it's not that this, if it's a this city, they would not have voted for a Yoruba person. They would have said, ah, it's Yoruba, it's not in the But they just voted for labor, you know? Even when they did not know who the candidate was, all they were interested in is labor, labor, labor. Majority of them, my house of rep is, is, is uh, is, uh, is Yoruba, the two uh, other House of Assembly. One of them is a Yoruba person. The other one is from Edo State. So none okay. of them is even Igbo. So when we put coloration that is uh, Igbo, Igbo, no. It's not the issue, well, it's not about Igbo. Uh, but people be tired with one set of government and they wanted a change. Honorable Emmanuel Ogo, I get your point. Hello, Ruben. The uh, uh, mayor of the yeah. city of London is of uh, Pakistani. Uh, origin can the uh, first minister of uh, yeah. Scotland uh, Yusuf uh, is also of Pakistani origin and then you have in uh, the UK Ooh. a prime minister who is also of Indian uh, origin we can go on and on but thank you very much and for a Yoruba lady who is also a minister here yes in England thank yes. you very much I'm happy to speak with you <laughs> okay